Hi friends, I'm Pastor Joel Gartner, the National Director of Jesus Cares Ministries. We're excited to give you yet another resource for our friends with special needs to learn more about their Savior Jesus and grow in their faith. We're happy to provide you these videos of the live stream of our simplified worship service, Worship of the Cross. We pray that you would find them beneficial. In case you don't know, Jesus Cares Ministries is one of the ministries of the Lutheran Home Association. You can learn more about Jesus Cares Ministries by going to our website, tlha.org, and clicking on the Jesus Cares Ministries tab, or you can visit our Jesus Cares Ministries Facebook. Welcome, everyone, to a special Christmas Worship at the Cross to all of you here as well as all of you watching online. It's so good to have you here. Worship at the Cross, a Christmas special where we also will include some Christmas songs here in a little bit. I have my friend Phil here tonight to play guitar and sing, as well as a Christmas message. And so maybe you're familiar with the Christmas story and maybe it's been a while, at least a year, or maybe a few years since you've heard it. And so I want to welcome all of you here. If this is your first time joining us online, I want to let you know that you have opportunities throughout the service to see exactly where we're at. You'll know that this is the time to sing. This is the time that we get to praise God because we'll, I'll say, let's grab your rhythm instruments. And you'll see a symbol that we talk to God and ask for forgiveness. This is where we confess our sins. And here is where we hear God's word. And at the end, we will pray to him. And so I would encourage you watching online, if you first of all have something that I can pray about, we're going to pray here as well. But I'd like to pray for you at home, wherever you're watching. And maybe that's something for you. Or maybe that's a prayer for someone else whether they are in need or have a health problem, or maybe you just want to give thanks. And so those are the, some of the prayers we can do here. God wants us to ask for help, but he also wants us to give thanks. So keep that in mind. As well as what we're going to do here, if you're watching, is you're going to see parts of the Christmas story. And I would encourage you at home, maybe share in the, in the online chat as well, who would you like to have been at the Christmas story? Have you always wondered what it was like to be Joseph or Mary or the shepherds? So let us know those things too in the comments. All right, let's get started. We're going to begin our worship service with a Christmas hymn, and I would love to welcome Mr. Phil Boileau to start our worship service. Grab your shakers. Here we go. All right. Christmas is a time to be joyful, so we're going to sing Joy to the World. Of his 
Thank you, Phil. Thank you for starting our worship. Yeah, go ahead. We can praise God for the, the gifts that he's blessed Phil with, and you can applaud at home, too, if you're watching. Well, we're going to take the shakers that we just used. We're going to set them on the ground. We're going to set them on the side, and we're going to put them down just for a couple of minutes, and we're going to pick them back up soon, but we don't want them to be a distraction to anyone. So if you're using a shaker at home, you can set those down as well. And remember, if you're watching at home and you don't have one of those shakers, you can always take an empty water bottle, fill it with some dried beans or something like that, and, and it can be a, an excellent shaker as well. So, all right, let's begin our worship service. As you know here, we have some things that we do to begin our worship service. So our service begins because in that circle is a candle, a cross, and a bell. We worship at the cross because on the cross is where Jesus died for us. And then we also have a candle. And so, Dennis, do you want to help us out here? Yeah. We're going to light the candle. Thank you, Dennis. We light the candle to remind us Jesus is always with us. Give it a good ring, Ellie. Perfect. We ring the bell to remind us this is the time that we get to listen to God's word. We get to sing to him as we just did, and we also have another song coming soon. And then we also get to pray to him together. The candle, the cross, the bell, we worship God. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together. Let's all say amen. Amen. Thank you. There you see those pictures of God the Father in the clouds, the ray of sun coming down. We don't know what God looks like, but we have had Jesus on this earth as, a, as true man, true God and true man. And then the dove is the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three but one God. Hard for us to understand, but that's, that's how complex God is. And, and that's okay that we don't get it. We'll understand it one day when we know him. And I'm thankful for each person of the Trinity. Let's have a prayer and join me at home if you're watching. We're also going to pray here together. Dear Heavenly Father, come and be with us today. Bless our worship. Give us understanding as we listen to your word. Give us joy as we sing to your glory and give us peace as we bring our prayers to you. We ask this in Jesus' name and together, let's all say amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me in that. We have a person in that picture, and, and you can see that picture if you're watching at home. It should be on your screen where there is a man or we could have a woman. What are they doing, Dennis? Praying. Praying. Yeah, confessing. They're on their knees, and so even if you're at home watching and you'd like to do this, you could actually go on your knees next to a couch or a chair or a table or your, your bedside. We don't typically do that, but it might not be a bad, a bad idea sometimes to, to confess your sins to God. Now, can a person who's been locked up, can, can they confess sins to God? Absolutely. Does God forgive the sins of a person in jail? Does God forgive them? Absolutely, Maria. Yeah. That person, if they confess that sin and ask for forgiveness, God certainly forgives them. They will still have to do that a sentence. There still is a consequence for sin. But God certainly forgives. Now, you see those two boys and they're, they're arguing, they're fighting over a remote control. And the, the point there is sometimes we, we see things that are just really small. Like we maybe just yelled at somebody, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. We just stole something real, real tiny. No one will know that was missing. It's still wrong. Exactly, Dennis. And so should we go to God and ask him to forgive even something small. Yes, we should. So let's talk to God tonight. Let's talk to God today and ask him 
for forgiveness. And I say to all of you here, dear children of God, God's holy. God doesn't sin. God's holy. He doesn't want us to sin. But we are sinners, and we do what God tells us not to do, and we fail to do the things God tells us we should do. So today, let's tell God that we have sinned with just those words, God, I have sinned. Say that with me. God, I have sinned. Let's tell God that we're sorry with those simple words by saying, God, I am sorry. Say that with me. God, I am sorry. Here's the best part. Jesus died on the cross instead of you and me. And Jesus' death paid for your sins. So today you can be certain those words are true when you say, Jesus died for me. Say that with me. Jesus died for me. Through faith in Jesus, God has forgiven all your sins. And so let's tell the good news by sharing that with the people next to you, by sharing that with the people when we leave today that we may be run into, and we can say, God forgives me. Say that with me. God forgives me. The best part here is that man went from on his knees, and if you're at home, you can do this as well. Maybe you were on, on your knees praying to God. He jumps up. She jumps up. Yeah, they're, they're excited. They're celebrating. Think of something that you celebrate. We have been forgiven. And so why wouldn't we put our hands up and give thanks? So let's do that together by saying, thank you, God, for taking away my sins. Join me here and at home. Thank you, God, for taking away my sins. Thank you, everyone. You have been forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. And I hope and pray you watching at home, know your sins are forgiven. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Now we know that we have forgiveness for all of our sins. Now we know that we are your people. Now we know that we will live with you in heaven someday. Together, let's all say amen. Amen. Thanks for being here today on a, a special worship at the cross, and thanks for joining us online as we talk about things coming up before the Christmas season. And we're just, as Maria reminded me, only a few weeks away. Christmas is coming fast. And what I'd like to ask you tonight, today, is what is the part of Christmas what is the part of Christmas, especially in the story of Christmas, and we're going to share that in a little bit here, that you really enjoy? Which person in the Christmas story have you always wondered what would they be like? What were they thinking? Maria, what about Christmas is it that you like? About Jesus. Yeah, it's about Jesus. It's about what Jesus did for us. And so, Maybe you're here tonight and it's been a while since you've heard the Christmas story. Maybe you're watching at home and you've heard the Christmas story many times. Or maybe you're hearing it for the first time this year or today. And the Christmas story is an amazing story. It's a true story. It's something that shows God's love for us. It shows how much God gave by sending Jesus as a baby here on this earth. And so I hope and pray that the Christmas story never gets old. I hope and pray you never say, boy, we, we did that last year. And you see something new, something wonderful in the Christmas story. I'm going to share just a little bit with you of what it was like as we get into things, and then I'm going to have all of you play a part in this service play a part in the Christmas story, which is a true story. So we have a man who ran the government. He ran the government. His name was Caesar Augustus. He said, I need all of you to come and let me know how many people live in my land. And so all of the people went to register, to take a census. 
They went to their own town where they were born so that they could be counted. A man by the name of Joseph, and Joseph is out there, he is going to be the father of Jesus, the earthly father. Joseph went to his hometown called Bethlehem. He went there to register with his to be wife Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and she was also expecting a baby. Does anyone know who this baby was? Dennis? Jesus. Ellie, can you say Jesus? Jesus. Say Jesus. Yeah. Mary had a baby in her belly, and that baby was Jesus. So while they were there, that baby was born. That baby was born, and there were also shepherds. They were out in the fields. They were taking care of their sheep. And while they were taking care of their sheep, angels appeared. Have you ever seen an angel? What does an angel look like? Well, we don't know. We have an idea, and there's one angel down there that someone can choose in a little bit. But the angels were messengers. They gave praise. They told the shepherds, something big is happening. There's a savior. There's a child who is born, and he's going to rescue you. He's going to save you from your sin. The angels shared good news. And suddenly, after all those angels had left, the shepherds didn't say, well, let's keep watching sheep, did they? No. The shepherds said, let's go find that baby. We want to go see him. And so they hurried, and they found Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, who was in a manger because there wasn't a place for them to stay. There was no more room. The town was so crowded. Mary was amazed at all the things that were happening. And so Mary treasures the moments. She ponders the moments. She thinks about those things in her heart. And then the shepherds went out after they saw Jesus, and they told all the people what they had seen. Isn't that a wonderful story? Isn't that wonderful and comforting that's a true story? And that Jesus came for you. And so I'm going to share those words again, but I'd like you to consider who you'd like to be. And you don't necessarily need to have liked that person, or you could just choose to be it. So I would encourage you, I personally have always wondered, what would it have been like to be those sheep? Kind of odd, isn't it? What would it have been like to be those sheep sitting in the field and suddenly angels I mean, the shepherds were amazed. Yeah, exactly, Dennis. But what about those sheep? So here we go. Think about who you'd like to be. So we have Joseph. Joseph had to go and be counted. Who would like to be Joseph? And has anyone pondered Joseph? Yes, go ahead, Seth. So Je uh, Joseph would be the man. And he is the man there who is kneeling. Very good, Seth. Yep, you got it. Your hand is right by him, Seth. Go ahead. And I'd like for you to bring Joseph up here and place him in the manger. And, and, and those of you watching at home, I know you're able to see Joseph being placed in the manger according to what Seth... Seth, you like Joseph because? Just because? Okay, that's fine. I'm glad you chose Joseph. That's a good start. He took Mary. Who has thought, I wonder what it would have been like to be Mary? Anyone? Maria? Okay, go ahead, Maria. Why don't you find Mary? What would it have been like to be Mary? She finds out, yeah, that's exactly. And so you get to see Maria taking Mary who just had a baby, and not just any baby, she had the Son of God. How do you think she felt, Maria? Better. Better? <laughs> yeah, she probably did feel better after she had the baby, and riding on a donkey all the way to Bethlehem. Absolutely. Do you think when she pondered all the things that were happening, 
How do you think her heart felt? Pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I'm curious, those of you watching at home who would have been like to, uh, to think about Mary and thought about what she was like. So they have baby Jesus, and when they are there, it's just him, Jesus as a baby, Joseph and Mary, and then we have shepherds. We're told about the shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks. Anyone consider what the shepherds were like? Hmm. Where did the shepherds go? Oh. Oh, I guess we're missing shepherds. Well, if you're watching online, we're missing shepherds, and that's okay. We're going to make this work because we still have sheep. Okay? So... I thought about the sheep. Is it okay if I take the sheep? Okay, thank you. I'm going to play some of the sheep, and who would like to help with some of the other animals? You were, you were wondering about the camel. Yeah, go ahead, Dennis. If you want to bring a camel up, go right ahead. That would be wonderful. So we have the sheep here who are missing their shepherd, shepherds. And Allie's going to bring up one of the cows. And while those shepherds are there, angels appeared. We do have an angel. Have you considered what the angels were like? Thank you, Allie. Maria, go ahead. You can take the angel if you'd like. And you could bring the sheep up too, Dennis, if you want. And Maria, there's actually a spot for you to put the shepherd, or I'm sorry, the angel right up above. There's a little hook. Yeah. Absolutely. What are we missing besides the shepherds that <laughs> I thought we had? Oh, Dennis. Dennis, can you turn and just kind of show that to the camera? And that way they can see at home. Who's missing in there, Dennis? Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. Do you want to you wanna place that down there? And look what I found. A baby Jesus. Ellie, do you see baby Jesus? We have a baby Jesus. And here, Dennis, you can put baby Jesus in there. Maybe show everyone on the camera nice and slow so that they can get a good picture of that and see baby Jesus. Thank you, Dennis. Nice work. There we go. Mary Joseph, baby Jesus. Shepherds who were excited, probably scared because angels appeared. But an amazing story. So I would encourage you in this Christmas, take time. Take time away from all the busyness, all the things you have to do, your shopping. Those of you watching at home, I'm sure you have things going on as well. And so take time to ponder as Mary did. All the things that were happening. How wonderful it is that Jesus, your Savior, has come to this earth to be a savior to you and me. We're missing one more person. We're missing one more person? Who would that be? The wise men. The wise men. That's a good question, Dennis. Actually, the wise men were not there the night Jesus was born, as the shepherds may have been. The wise men first come probably a year and a half to two years later. Jesus is a, he's, he's a lot older. Not, not much older. He's still a toddler. He's maybe Ali's age. And so when they saw that, that star, it took them a while to travel and actually get there. And so I didn't bring the wise men tonight because the, they weren't there right away and they weren't part of the reading I shared from Luke 2. So if you are watching at home and want to go back to the story, it was Luke 2 verses 1 through 20. And I want to just focus and close. And Seth, if you could give me that next slide, I want to share that part with you before we close here. The angels left and went into heaven, and then the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in a manger. 
God bless your Christmas, and God bless your Christmas if you're watching at home. Remember to share your prayers, and we'll take those in a little bit. But I would also encourage you, if you came here tonight and brought something, to, to share an offering if you'd like, to give back to the ways God has blessed you. If you're watching at home, remember to give back to God the way he's blessed you, by giving back at your own home church, maybe to your own Jesus Cares ministry. And if you don't have one, I'm thankful you're watching this Jesus Cares service and would encourage you to share and support the National Jesus Cares Ministry Office. And you'll see that information on your screen. Thank you for being part of that. And I want to welcome Mr. Phil Boylo back to close our service in another Christmas song. Grab your shakers. Let's sing. We're going to sing a song called Go Tell It on the Mountain. Now, you don't have to tell about Jesus just on a mountain. You can tell him at a grocery store. You can tell him where you live. You can do all those things, which are pretty neat. But please join and, and sing. You might know, especially that chorus. Go tell it on the mountain. It goes like this. Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere That Jesus Christ is born. Tell about the shepherds, the star up in the sky, the angels shouting glory. Our hope is burning high. high. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell how mercy found you, how love has made you new. Go tell the weak and weary how grace has brought you through. Ooh, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and every Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go sing of your salvation, the joy that never ends. Go tell the world that Jesus will one day come again. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born sing this oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him Christ the Lord sing with me now we give to him the glory we give to him the glory we give to him the glory Christ the Lord. Phil, thank you. You're thank welcome. you for leading our service and song. I think we can certainly give God praise by applauding Phil again. Thank you for that. What a Christmas music. While I don't like to have it before Thanksgiving, and maybe you're watching at home think the same way, it is a wonderful thing to have to be blessed with Christmas music right now. So thank you for your prayer request, re request if you're watching at home. I appreciate that. Mariah, it's very good to have you here again. And Mariah, I know um, some things have been really challenging for you this year, and, and we will certainly pray for your mother who will possibly need some surgery tomorrow. Anyone else here that would like me to pray about something? Dennis. Well, yesterday, last night, was not a good night for me. 
Okay, so you didn't have a good night last night. What happened, Dennis? My room, my room and I fight in the guns of fire. Sure. And I kind of punch them. Oh, that's not good, Dennis. So, I love my, I love yeah. My anger. So, that was a little bit more than what we said at the beginning with those two boys fighting over a remote. You had a, a really big dispute with a roommate. So, so Dennis, I think what we're going to do in that prayer is we're going we're gonna to ask God to, to, to maybe heal that relationship with you and your roommate. Yeah. And I want to give thanks to God, too, for your new job. Yeah. Okay, is that okay? Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Something that we can pray about? Ellie? Okay. We're going to give thanks to God for Ellie? Perfect. I like it. So we're going to pray for Mariah. We're going to pray for Dennis. And then we're going to pray for Ellie. So join me at home with your praying. And I know we also had a re request for, for people... Uh, in different parts of the world who are suffering. And so I want to honor that request as well. And people suffering for the Christian faith, uh, that they um, persevere through that. Yes, Dennis. Yes, absolutely. People who maybe have COVID-19. So let's pray. Join me at home if you're praying. Let's pray here. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to worship. Thank you for Dennis, who is here. And I pray for some healing, a healing relationship with Dennis and his roommate. Things didn't go very well last night, so, so help Dennis to be more calm in building that relationship. Give him patience. Be with his roommate as well to do the same. And I want to give you thanks for Dennis's new job that he has, that he's able to work. Thank you for that. Lord, for, for Ellie, who is here today, I give you thanks. She's able to go do a lot of different things with her parents, and I'm thankful she's here. Lord, Mariah is watching, and Mariah's mom may go in for surgery tomorrow. And I know that's stressful for her whole family. It's stressful for Mariah. And so I pray, Lord, that you are with them and keep them in your care. And may her surgery be something that is successful and that she heals. I also pray, Lord, for those suffering throughout our world, whether it's for their faith or different things that people may just make fun of them for. Uh, be with people and care for them. Help us to love others, especially in this Christmas season as we ponder your love for us, how Jesus came to this earth to be our Savior. Bless and keep us this Christmas season. And we thank you for hearing our prayers. Bless the Jesus Cares Ministries throughout our nation, whether they're at a smaller church or a large church, whether they are meeting in person or not able to meet, I pray for those Jesus Cares Ministries and the work that they do, the people that they serve, and the ministry that they have. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Join me at home as we close with the Lord's Prayer and you see different pictures, different parts. We say it a little bit slower and I would encourage you to join me here as well. As we say it together, our Father in heaven, join me. Our Father in heaven. We also say, hallowed be your name. Say that with me. Hallowed be your name. We say, your kingdom come. Join me. Your kingdom come, wanting God's word to go to all people. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Say that with me. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Say that. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Say that with me. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Say that with me. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power. Join me. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Say that with me. And the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love that God has for all of you, whether you're here tonight or you're watching at home, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all until we get to see each other again. We close our service by ringing the bell, blowing out the candle, if you'd like. And knowing that God is always with us, even though that candle 
is not lit anymore, and that bell gives us a sign that our service is over. Thank you for joining us here, and thank you for watching online. God bless you, and may God bless your Christmas. Thank you for watching this video of our Worship at the Cross service. You can support the ongoing work of Jesus Cares Ministries by going to tlha.org slash donate. Your gifts enable us to not only produce videos like this and share the gospel of Jesus with many more with special needs, it also allows us to continue to reach out to those with special needs all across the United States as well as in Malawi, Africa. Thank you again for joining us.